Kelly is off for the rest of this week, so that means I'm here, okay? And you know how I am. No, 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 no. I am the guy. I am Mr. ESPN Vet. <laughs> I am the guy. You saw that little commercial when you go to that deli. Local legend. <laughs> you got it. First take is in the house. <laughs> ground rules. We don't have any ground rules on this show. It's a problem. Oh. Number one, I am the boss. Okay? No interruptions. Uh, when ooh. I'm talking, Kimberly quiet, Saturday quiet, <laughs> Smith quiet. Number one. If you are not in the studio with quick response, if you're not in the studio when we start, you are not on that segment. Not on. <laughs> so if you're 40, go to the bathroom, <laughs> cup of coffee, your egg and cheese sandwich, uh, like, I like him, you are Uh-oh. not Uh-oh. on. Uh-oh. That's all there is to it. And lastly, please, no mention of LeBron <laughs> or Bonnie <Ronnie> today. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal with it. I'll worry about the Pistons on October 22nd when I bet them for the over. I can't deal with them right now. It's not Pistons or LeBron basketball. Okay, I get this stuff. All right, so all right, everybody. All right, here we go Talk now. Let's get, let's get to it. Let's Lord get ourselves started. Us okay, all. you want to say something? Yeah, come Lord, on, show. Lord, you Lord, Lord, help us all. <laughs> Lord, help us all. Let, let's go. All right, let's here we have it now. Let's the beast. <laughs> Day one. You get the beast. I'm hand. never leaving this chair. Molly's going to go back to the NFL. Molly's going back to the NFL Network. I mean, I'm staying right here, baby. All right, here we go now. <laughs> here we go. The Jets, we all know, parted ways with head coach Robert Sala. Obviously, everybody on this panel was involved with that yesterday. We had not heard by the time we got off the air Woody Johnson. He, of course, did his big deal yesterday with the conference call. And we have to figure out what's going on with Woody and why he made this decision. So let's listen to his little soundbite. Jet owner Woody Johnson and Rogers, of course, didn't sound like any of this input. We'll get to that in a minute. But here's Woody. Listen to this. Well, I did talk to him the night before, but we didn't discuss this, you know, specifically at all. I mean, we were basically talking about the, the previous game and, you know, his breaking 60,000 yards, 60,000 yard record and accomplishing that. And uh, sorry, he got hit so many times and, uh, and that. And how was he feeling? And uh, so, no, in terms of whether I was going to do it or not, no, we didn't discuss that. All right, so we can debate that, and we will here in a minute. <laughs> and we will. We sure will. Stephen A. gets first crack at it. Stephen, are you buying Mr. Johnson's comments that basically had a nice conversation about the weather on Monday night, <laughs> and Robert Sala never came up? Take it away well, first. Well, Go ahead. Well, 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 first of all, you need to watch Law & Order more. You don't lead the witness the way you just tried to do. Uh, that just shows the level of amateurism on your part. Get it together. <laughs> Secondly, look in the right camera because you were looking in the wrong camera. Like, get back here. Okay, get back here. Now, of course, I don't believe him. Of course, this is nonsense. Uh, you, you, you fire Robert Sala, and then you have a conversation about with Aaron Rodgers about cookies and milk and how you're right. getting hit too much. And, you know, did you get a massage? Did you get a pedicure? Did you got a masseuse there for you? That's really what the conversation was about? Let's stop that. We are, we're not boo-boo the fools around here. We know that the man is lying. Uh, but what is he supposed to say? You're talking about an owner. In Woody Johnson, when you look at the coaches that they've had, they've had about four different head coaches over the last several years. We can't deny that. Number two, uh, he didn't. I think the thing that was most telling is that he said that there was some trepidation over a couple of years. Yep. I think that that's what he got because I think that 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 solidified what we were speculating about yesterday, uh, 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 Saturday, when we talked about how he's probably not the one that made the decision. It was Christopher Johnson. And Christopher Johnson, his brother, probably didn't consult him. And he made the decision to hire Robert Sala because Woody Johnson was being busy being an ambassador to England for the United States of America. And as a result, he said, hey, I'm going to lead a football decision in, in terms of this hire to you. Clearly, that appears to be the case because he certainly wasn't taking any onus for Robert Sala being the head coach to begin with. I think that's the thing that I peeled away from what he had to say. But to answer the question directly in terms of, you know, his thoughts thoughts about his comments, I thought, you know, I applaud him for getting in front of the media, Kimberly, and talking to y'all, or, you know, during the, uh, the conference call and stuff like that. I applaud that. Most A lot of owners would have hid or uh, would have waited a couple of more days or whatever. He didn't do that. He made the decision, and he was on the phone with people explaining his rationale yesterday. Credit for that, uh, but that's about all he deserves credit for as far as I'm concerned. And you can sit up there and say he didn't necessarily make the wrong decision. The timing of it was questionable, but maybe the wrong decision is not something to say. But what his explanation about talking to Aaron Rodgers, 
he just ruined everything because he showed how he's willing to lie. Because nobody right. believes what the hell he said about that. All right, I'll go last here, Kimberly. You next. I just want, uh, it's my, I can go. I, you can go. The host is always supposed to go last. The host is supposed to go last. I'll go last. You be quiet. All right, then. <laughs> you be Norm quiet. Normally, I'm the boss. Normally, the host doesn't have an opinion, Mad Dog. Normally, they just <laughs> sit here and direct traffic. But Molly, these are things Molly knows, but it's okay. Actually, um, she does it. She has opinions. But go ahead. Steven, come on. Um, so, all right. It is very hard for a Jets fan or a lay person to sit in this situation and hear everything that Woody Johnson said and square it with what has transpired and come away from that thinking, oh yeah, I totally see the logic and all the pieces fitting together. The problem is, Stephen, as you pointed out, Woody Johnson saying, I have had a couple years to think about this. He pushed back on the notion that the last two weeks were the impetus for this move. The problem with that is, is that Woody Johnson went to the facility unexpected yeah. the Monday after the Broncos lost, that embarrassing loss that I covered in the rain where their offense looked like the Zach Wilson offense of a few years ago. Woody Johnson went to the facility, told Robert Sala, coordinators, hey, that London game, that's essentially a must win. Now, I'm told Robert Sala knew the owner was upset but didn't think an ultimatum was on the table this early in the season when you have a division game on a Monday night when first place is up in the air, up for grabs. So when Woody Johnson says, I've had a few years to think about this, now you're telling us, well, you weren't sure about this man when this season started. Right. Now we have to ask the question, why did you allow Robert Sala to be the head coach then? If you weren't sold, why, with so much at stake, when you knew that the only, the only outcome for this team this year with Aaron Rodgers was a Super Bowl, why allow him? Good point. To be the head coach. And I think that's the problem with Woody's comments. And also, if, if you bring in Aaron Rodgers, you, you essentially are cutting off the head coach's feet. Like, you don't have, that guy doesn't have any power because, Jeff, you know, well, not you know, I don't mean it like that, but you understand that as the head coach, if you bring in Aaron Rodgers, you don't have as much power because Aaron Rodgers is running the show. Why would you believe it? You've literally, what you just said, you've given Aaron Rodgers everything he has asked for. You basically built the organization around him in the two years that he has been there. And then you're going to say, oh, I'm going to consult on everything except, except the head coach. This is where I'm going to draw the line. I'm going to do it everywhere else. But, but the head coach, I'm going to keep to myself. Absolutely not. We know better than that. There's no way that Aaron didn't know. And again, could he have saved his job? Probably not. I don't mean it that way. I don't mean that Aaron signed off on it. But to not to, to act like you didn't have a conversation, and to, to Stephen, your point about massages, sixty thousand yards. Give me a freaking break. We just lost two games. We've been the worst offense. We, we, we've been a Zach Wilson offense since you you started. You're not talking about sixty thousand yards. If, if that's your focus on him getting that, you're you're way off as an owner anyway, because you ain't playing good enough football to be talking about sixty thousand yards. Let's get our let's get our blitz pick up and our first and second down fix before we worry about somebody's accolades, right? That individual mm -hmm. accolades. It makes it makes well, no sense. And to the, and to the go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and John. to the side of what he thinks he's gaining, Kimberly, you made a great point. When you bring Aaron Rodgers in, you have neutered the head coach because all the power that you gave that Robert Sala had, you've now taken and given to the quarterback, which worked in. Denver with Peyton Manning, and it worked in Tampa with, with Tom Brady. So it has shown that it, it could work. But when you tell him, keep the defense going, and then the, this offense that we're going to placate to Aaron, all his coordinator, his, 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 and then say, but you're responsible for it being successful. And when it's not, I've thought about it for two years, but I'm going to fire you after five games. Like those don't, it's illogical. The whole thing of what he was talking about doesn't follow any train of thought. The bottom line is Woody Johnson panicked. This mm -hmm. team, this team is Super Bowl or bust. You have a 40 plus year old quarterback who is wow. getting crushed right now behind this offensive line. Mm -hmm. So his longevity mm -hmm. is going to be in question. Right. And, and all, all the, are you going to add Devontae? All this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. At Jeff. the end of the day, is he is, is Ulrich going to take you to a Super Bowl versus Sala? Uh, illogical Jeff, again. Jeff, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to warn you to be a bit more concise because the more you talk, the more you'll tempt Doggy to bring up North Carolina. Watch yourself. <laughs> trust, just trust me on this, okay? Just trust me on this. That's number one, okay? That's number one. That's a warning. Number one. Yeah. Number two. Number two, all you had to say was that Woody Johnson's words 
meant absolutely nothing the minute Kimberly revealed to us, along with others, that he walked into the locker room or the coach's office after the loss to Denver and talked about Minnesota being a must win. Yeah. Because if you did that the week before, how the hell are you talking to Aaron Rodgers about nothing the week Thank later? Thank you. Thank you. That, 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 that's all you need to say. Go ahead, doggy, because we want to hear what you got to say. Well, three or four things here, and you guys did a good job with it. An excellent point there with the whole thing with the coordinators the Monday before. I can't have a lot of sympathy for Salah. He's 20 and 36. I know he's a nice guy, but the Jets have not. He did not overachieve. I understand Zach Wilson stinks and Donald. He did not overachieve. It's not like the Jets had one big year like, say, Belichick did when Matt Castle was the quarterback that went 11 and 5. We didn't have any real surprises. Number two, beginning of the year, they didn't play well in San Francisco. They had no sense of urgency. Rodgers bailed them out of the Tennessee game, played well against the Patriots, but they were awful against Denver, and they were awful there on Sunday afternoon. I also said on this show last week that if Salah was going to have three bad games here against the Vikings, the Bills, and Pittsburgh, he was not going to last because this owner is 77 years of age. I know he likes to think that he's done a great job in 25 years. He's been an awful owner. Everybody in New York knows that. Right. He has not done a good job. Didn't handle this properly either. You guys handled the whole thing with the conversation with Rodgers, who does have blood on his hands. There's no other way around it. Because if Rodgers wanted to save Salah, he could have saved him on Monday. Yep. He could have said, hey, coach, I, I wouldn't. Take it easy. We played five games. I was terrible on Sunday. Blame it on me. I threw two picks in the first half, including a pick six, and I threw a bad pass to Mike Williams at the end. We had a chance to bail out the game. So if he throws a better pass to Mike Williams in the fourth quarter, does that mean that Salas to the coach? Right. Because it would have beaten Minnesota to be three and two. So you can make an argument that Woody could have, I mean, that Aaron could have convinced Woody, keep him here if he had the conversation mm -hmm. on Monday. But I can't feel sorry well, for Salah. I cannot feel sorry for him when you've been here for three and a half years and you're 20 and 36. Kimberly? I no, no. I understand what you were saying, Mad Dog, because the sentiment, we've been airing the clip of Marcus Spears saying they fired the most unimportant person in the building. Today, if you're a Jets fan, you're waking up and thinking, whether you agree with the decision or not, now you're like, okay, let's see what this other guy can do, because I've seen five games of this. I've seen three and a half years of Robert Sala with this team. The team hasn't been good. It is hard to, he's a great, great guy. Robert Sala is a tremendous guy. But if you're a fan who understands it's this season, you are not guaranteed Russell Wilson, excuse me, Russell Wilson, whoa. You're not guaranteed Aaron Rodgers back in this building next year. So everything has to be on the table. And if Woody Johnson is saying, I got to shake something up, I got to do something, mm -hmm. you, Woody Johnson has to hope that shaking it up and appointing the well, D.C. to be the head coach is going to be the thing that does it. Well, far be it for me well, to yeah. engage in, in any kind of conspiracy theories, doggy, Kimberly, uh, Saturday, but Rodgers has a conversation with Woody Johnson on a Monday and then promptly goes out there and throws three game interceptions in the game. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm certainly not implying that he did it on purpose. Let's just say that there might have been other motivations for him to get solid the hell up out of there. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there because, <laughs> Lord, we ain't seen Aaron Rodgers play the bad. I'm joking, of course, but we just we we haven't seen Aaron Rodgers play to, to throw that many interceptions. We just don't see that from him. That's number one. Number two, we all know that Aaron Rodgers was responsible for the offense, okay? And, I'm again, if he doesn't like Salah, I don't blame him. Uh, if he doesn't want him as a coach, I don't blame him. But it doesn't absolve him, and here's where we can defend Robert Salah. It's the only place we can defend him. But we can defend him here. Looking at this, Jets ranking, total defensive rankings. Total defense, number two. Yards per play allowed, number one. Scoring defense, fifth. Third down defense, eighth. Red zone defense, sixth. Quarterback sacks, fourth. C.J. Mosley has missed time. You're still having to sign to sign Reddick. But nevertheless, the defense did that. So basically, and he had a lot to do with the game plan that Ulbrich and that obviously was helping to orchestrate as the defensive coordinator as well. So we know that he's got that pat down pat. And then you bring up, doggy, how Aaron Rodgers could have nipped it in the bud with the conversation in Woody when Woody rolled, you know, when, when Woody spoke to him yep. last, last week before the Minnesota game, then it stands to reason that there was clearly a desire for Aaron Rodgers to move on from Robert Sala because if he didn't have a strong desire for that to happen, the man would probably still be here.